Okay, so let's have a look at this next example. We want to use Newton's method to solve this equation, x to the one-third equals zero, by taking x not equals to one. Um, so here's our function, that's f of x. f of x is equal to x to the one-third, and we want to use Newton's method to find the root. Well, wait a minute. Why would we use Newton's method to find a root? We know that the only value which has a cubed root of zero is zero itself. So we already know that the solution to this is zero. So there's no point in applying Newton's method. Well, okay, the point here is to not apply Newton's method to find the root. It's to apply Newton's method to a case where we know what to expect as an answer. We expect Newton's method to return zero if it's going to give us an approximation for the root. So let's see what happens when we apply Newton's method. Um, we need to know the derivative. So this is going to be one-third x to the negative two-thirds. We're going to write down Newton's iterative formula. And what does that become? Well, Newton's iterative formula says the next approximation is the previous one minus the function value at xn over its derivative at xn. So that's xn minus xn to the one-third all over 1 over 3x to the 2 thirds, and that becomes then xn minus 3xn, because that xn to the 2 thirds can come up, combine with the xn to the 1 third to give us an xn to the 3 thirds, which just becomes xn. So this becomes negative 2xn, and that's xn plus 1. So there's a nice compact expression for Newton's iterative formula. Let's start with our initial guess. Okay, here we're calling it x0. x0 is 1. What do we get as our next value? Well, plugging that into our iterative formula, we get it's negative 2 times 1, or negative 2. Plugging that into our iterative formula, we get that it's negative 2 times the previous one, so negative 2 times negative 2 is 4. Okay, plugging that in again becomes negative 8. And we see that every time we take the um, approximation, plug it back into our iterative formula, we just end up multiplying it by negative 2. So what's happening is our sequence of numbers is not getting closer and closer to zero. Our sequence of numbers is actually getting bigger and bigger and bigger, bouncing back and forth on opposite sides of zero on the real line and heading off to infinity. So the thing here is, is that if we continue this, we see that x n does not converge. So what does that mean? It means Newton's method failed in this case. Now, there can be different reasons for why Newton's method fails. Uh, the, most, um, the most common one you're going to see in practice is you probably failed because you didn't take a good initial guess. You want that x0 value to be good so that it's nice and close to the root so that when you apply the formula you get closer and closer and closer. If you take it too far away, as we've seen in sort of the, the more dynamic examples that I did with the applet, the sequence of approximations can head away from where you're trying to go to, where you're trying the, the, the actual value of the root. So Newton's method failed in this case. Why? Well, was it because we took x not to be 1? Maybe if we took x not to be closer to 0, it would have worked. Maybe x not to be a half. Well, that wouldn't have worked either because each time we're taking our initial guess and multiplying it by 2. And then there's a sign adjustment, either positive or negative, um, because they're going to alternate. But you're going to be taking the, the magnitude of your approximation, and you're going to be doubling it, and then doubling that, and doubling that. So no matter what your initial guess is, if it's not zero, if, you're, if your initial guess isn't exactly the root to begin with, then you're never going to converge to the root in this example. So this is just an example to be aware of, that Newton's method is really highly dependent on that initial guess. And if your initial guess is bad, Newton's method may not give you a conclusive answer. It may, not, it may not converge into that root, so you might need to readjust your initial guess. So the picture for what's going on here really looks something like this. We have our function x to the one-third, which looks like this. We take any initial guess. Here we took one. There was our initial guess, our roots there, the origin, that's what we're trying to hone in on. So there's our root at the origin, and from our initial guess, we construct the tangent line, gets us out here. And if that was 1, then as we saw, this is going to be negative 2. 
and then we come down here, take its tangent line, and then go up and take its tangent line. And every time we do this, we keep getting values that are farther and farther away from our actual root. So due to the shape of this graph and the fact that we're using these tangent lines to get our next approximations, things are going away from the root. Okay? Just something to be aware of that these examples exist.